Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Pop Culture Retro. I'm one of your hosts, Jonathan Rosen, along with a man who needs no introduction, yet threatens me multiple times that I better give him a glowing one, Ike Eisenman. Ike, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I um, I only need no introduction to you and props our <laughs> audience because they, they already know I'm here. But uh, yes. otherwise, yeah, yeah, pretty much it's important every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well... Today's topic, which you know we've been talking about doing for a while, and I'm very excited about, it. We, we've been discussing this since we first started. Actually, uh, is '80s mall culture, '70s, '80s, I guess, mall culture, and you know how much different it was. And you know, kids today, you know, people still go to the mall, but you know, like like I, we see movies and TV shows like Stranger Things. Stranger Things depicts it very. Actually, they do not realize, I guess how much of life was centered around the mall it was like such a huge cultural place that you know this this was the social spot for teens back then oh yeah no most most definitely and it's i i think it's a well i mean because it, it was not i wasn't a teen at the time but it was part of my my life because you know i um you know grew, i lived in los angeles i lived in the san fernando valley and and i was as anxiously awaiting the opening of Sherman Oaks Galleria as anyone else out there was. And, you know, I, I um, was that the first mall that you went to? That I was, was the gonna, one? No, no, not the first mall. Cause I'd been to malls oh. before, you know, uh, you, there, there, there are several, you know, malls are kind of all over the place in, in LA and um, um, mostly they were kind of outdoor, outdoor experiences you know, we're, all right. you know you, you 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 walked in outdoor corridors with plants and all that stuff and all the stores were you know tucked in and around around the architecture um well, that's like and, the strip malls no is that what we were strip malls yeah i guess i yeah I, I guess so i guess that's 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 what you you know how you'd think of them they were still the precursor to the big enclosed mall space um, you know, with, mm. with, you know, climate control and, and, you know, multiple tiers and, and all of that. Um, cause I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think Cul I try Culver city it was near, near 20th century Fox, actually, actually, you know, the famous Nakatomi building from Die Hard right. sits yeah. right next to one of the oldest small spaces in, in LA. I don't know if it still exists anymore or not, but it was an open air area. It's like the first place I encountered the gap as a store and actually <laughs> bought jeans from it. So we're going way back the late, honestly, the late, late sixties. Um, well, and one thing I want to ask you before you go on, just with yeah. this about your, your experiences, because I've been curious about before, you know, would we, ever since we first mentioned this, I guess, you, were you able to go to a mall? Because, like, we're talking about really the the height of mall popularity, mall culture, I guess, was also like, you know, you were like still like, you know, a teen, like a big teen you know, star then. I mean, were you <laughs> able to go without people bothering you or no? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was. I was, generally speaking, able to go out in the world, but... I got recognized a lot, you know, people mm -hmm. would approach me and, and say something. So, uh, you know, just to say hi, or, you know, an appreciative exchange or, or once in a while to ask for an autograph, which was um, always lovely and nice, but overall it just made me very self-conscious when, when sure. I was out. Cause I, I, I always felt like I was being stared at, you know, by, by somebody, mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, no, I was able to, it was never intrusive on my life. I wasn't a Leif Garrett, you know, it's like Leif Garrett couldn't go do those things really. Um, mm -hmm. you know, which is, I don't know, it's, 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 it, it's a horrible way to live, especially, you know, when you're a young person, you know, but so no, yes, I was able to go do that. That, 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 that was not a problem for me, but it was, 
you know, going to the mall and shopping or, you know, was really kind of a part of my life ever since I was fairly young. And when I moved to, uh, you know, into the Valley, um, we had, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Like literally three blocks down the street from me was another open air mall um, mm -hmm. that was one level um really lovely i liked going there quite a bit just to hang out walk around go to the bookstore you know I, I was never a real big shop shopper per se but you know if i needed to go get clothes or whatever that's kind of where i would go and um you know my mother and i used to frequent it um a lot of times it was just it was just a it was just a fun place to kind of go and get out and um you know, and hang out and have an, an enjoyable time. Um, so when, you know, the Galleria uh, was in the works, um, which was again in Sherman Oaks, right at the uh, Western, yeah, the Western edge of Sherman Oaks before, just before um, Encino, Ventura Boulevard and Sepulveda Boulevard, you know, it's like, a, that's a major like cross section there right near the uh, San Diego freeway that, that the 405 that comes up through the valley. Um, they were planning this big, you know, multi-tiered enclosed space and was going to have movie theaters and, you know, fast food places and or, or not necessarily fast. Well, I guess it would be fast food, fast food places and, um anchor stores and and you know a lot of stuff going on we were all very excited about it and before long after it opened it was i think it opened in 1980 literally in 1980 in no time at all it became the teen hangout and yes that is the hot red center of the teen mall culture um phenomenon or i don't know what you're not phenomenon but you know period of time um and yeah, it happened. It that's where it happened, and I was there watching it, you know, unfold right in front of me. Now I was already out of high school, you know, living an adult life by that point. So I went there for the same reasons I went to other malls, just to go shop, and you know, not necessarily to hang out with friends because I, <clears throat> I didn't do, I didn't really do that. But you could see all the kids. I mean um doing their thing and that's where they gravitated to and an entire culture came out of that and i that's why i was going to ask you what what mall culture meant to you being a west coast or an east coast person or you know certainly not an la person um i what i don't know is how this idea spilled out and if it did very much to the rest of the country well I mean, that was always the place. There, there were two malls. I mean, I, I lived overseas for between 79 and 81. So when I came back, yeah. we were like smack dab already in the middle of mall culture, I guess. we were. It, was, it had already started. That was the place that you went, like everything. You spent your, you, you could spend your whole day there, just about. Yeah. Everything was there. Um, there were two that I, you mentioned the ones that you hung out with when I was living in New York. And it's amazing to think, you know, it was King's Plaza I, I, I always went to. That was the mall in New York then. And uh, now it's like people think of it as like this old, decrepit place, of course. And the same thing with when I was living in St. Pete, Florida, which I did for much of my teen years. It was I was Tyrone Square Mall, which also like, you know, it still exists, but there are so many other options that people go to now. But like, you know, after school, everyone was like, we're going to the mall. We're going to the mall. <laughs> and yeah. Every, everything was there. And I, I mean, when I was younger, still a little bit younger than teens, I, I've mentioned this before too. I, I would go with my parents and, you know, you can go to the movies there. My parents would take me to the movies. They, they were right. in the mall, right? There, we, we never did anything without going to the bookstore. Uh, you know, my, my dad took me, then it was Walden Books, later on B. Dalton's also, but it was, it was always Walden Books was in the mall. We stopped every single time. And that, you know, like behind me is the Walden Books. And Absolutely. I remember when we we talked about it also, another thing, you know, places like Farrell's were, were in the mall too. So it's like, you know, you did everything there. Mm -hmm. Later on, it like, you know, later on as teens, that's, you know, people just hang out in the, in the food courts, where they had they had other diners in the mall, you know, all these people go eat at the mall. 
and they had all the stores that you that were on the must lists, like Spencer's Gifts, which you know I, I think still exists, but that was everyone was hanging out there. Um, you had the record stores in the mall. You know, everyone was going to get the new the new record or the new then later on the new CD. You know, as people were always by the music store. And what's fascinating, you know, besides the other stores, in the music store was Ticketmaster. So when ever a concert came around to town, people flocked to the mall early, waiting outside the record stores uh. for Ticketmaster. Because you didn't, you know, you know, it was so much easier to get it there than to wait on the phone and get the busy signal all the time. And people just went to go get the, you know, their new, the tickets to the concert at, at the mall, which is like mind boggling now today because you don't yeah. do anything like that now. You know, you, everything's online. But uh, then it was you had to go in person. You saw these long lines out the door of the me- of the record store. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, you could spend all day there and it quickly especially the Galleria quickly became, you know, their entire business model shifted around to accommodating teenagers. You know, you could, you could eat, drink, yes, go to the movies. Um, You know, the teenagers didn't really shop there necessarily, but it, um, but, but yeah, that, that is, that was where they congregated. And of course there was a, um, there, there was a um, arcade, you know, video arcade place, oh, absolutely. you know, I mean, so really it, it was, it was a multi-generational experience and they really figured out fast how to cater to, to everyone. Um, an extension well, of this. Yeah. Sorry, but no, an extension of this. And I don't know if anybody will really remember these people. Maybe you do and have seen them, but the mall walkers cropped up yes. and it became, that became an, like an exercise routine where these older, <laughs> usually generally speaking women, that still I saw happens. a man every once in a while. It, I'm right. sure it does. I'm sure it yeah. does. But I mean, it erupted out of this whole thing because it was this huge space. It was air conditioned, carpeted floors. And um, because that was an odd thing. I mean, a lot of them had, you know, the 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 walkways were were carpeted and padded, and so you've got mm-hmm. these little old ladies in their like <laughs> one piece, you know, running suits with their, you know, high end sneakers on, you know, doing their mall walking, you know, and it was a social <laughs> thing. They then when they were done, they'd get coffee. And it's funny, my 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 wife Tia. I always feel like I have to qualify her. Um, <laughs> Tia worked in the Disney store uh, at one, and she said they 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 would be waiting, literally waiting. These mall walkers would be waiting to go into the Disney store before they even opened. That's how early in the morning they were there. So they had you know the space as much to themselves as possible so there were it was just a whole range of stuff and you know and it, and it was social and it was a gathering place and it was it you know it was fun it was just fun um you know you didn't see a lot of craziness or shenanigans i don't think i ever saw or heard of a you know a fight breaking out or any anything anything i don't like remember that, that either but, so much i mean yeah. i'm sure there were but i i don't remember that that being part of the whole experience that it fights like that um it was just a hangout you saw swarms yeah. like you said earlier yeah of people yeah and i mean and you, you, go, go ahead. ahead no 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 you go no and like you, you said the arcade you know you, it was first go first going to the mall was like always to me like exciting i don't i don't know what it's it's mine it's stupid to think about it like that but it was like an exciting thing like oh we're going to the mall yes like i, I can't wait uh, you know, when I was younger with my parents or when older as a teen, like when, when I would go with my friends, it was always like, you know, I couldn't wait to get to the mall uh, just to, for whatever reason, you know, either movie, like we did movies a lot. I definitely did movies a lot in the in the mall. But like you said, with the arcade, you know, if, if uh, you had like five bucks, you know, how many games could you play there and and, and seeing all the new video games that, yeah. that were out? Yeah. So well, I, no, I mean, did you the mall the mall is is i'm just putting this together and and i don't i don't know if it's analogous or not but it's like the internet okay you went to the mall and you mm-hmm. can do anything the internet is available yep. where you can go anywhere you know you want to look up books you can you just it's a you know you're tapping on your keyboard if you you know want to shop you're tapping on your keyboard it's all available and i think that's what what 
made it exciting because it was for me too. I really enjoyed going. I, like I said, I didn't hang out so much. Um, and maybe I did in a way, cause you know, I, I did a lot of stuff on my own, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing a miniature violin here, um, you know, about being a loner, but I was a loner. I love doing things on my own by myself, but I still enjoy being around people. So it was lovely to see, you know, all the energy and the people and the comings and goings, but the bookstore, the movie theater and the bookstore were the two big draws for me. Cause I was not a video game player. I tried really hard, but I, it just never clicked with me. It was, uh, I, I, I didn't quite get it, but, but those were the things that drew me in, you know, and if I needed it, I did need to go shopping for clothes, of course, then that was available and it was nice to do. And, you could get something to eat. Which, and, which store was you know. which store was your go to for clothes? I, you know, I don't know because there were so many. <laughs> there were so many boot like I want to call them boutiques, but you know, um, small stores. Aside from, um, you know, the two big anchor department stores at the Galleria were uh, Robinsons and May Company, uh, mm -hmm. which no longer exist anymore. And they actually, the two brands came together and became. Um, I kind of forgot what it's called. Um, anyway, they 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 blended their names together, and both stores then kind of had all the same stuff. Um, At one point, they did Chess King a lot. I was there. Chess all King. The time. No, you know what? Very good. I was trying to pull that out because Ch I like Chess King. Uh, yeah. They had a certain style of clothing that 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 just seemed to yes. work for me. And I I yeah, it was it was a little hipper and cooler and you know trendier uh than uh than than other stores but i couldn't shop there very much because i couldn't wear those clothes to audition so i was very pragmatic <laughs> i i had i i spent my money on clothes that i could wear to auditions and you know primarily and so that's 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 how i dress so i was a you know a bit of a conservative um guy most of the time but uh but yeah it, it, it it's um you know just to bring the you know the other layer of pop culture into this uh um you know two very you know famous movies were shot uh were based around malls but we got fast times at ridgemont high which was mm -hmm. actually shot inside the sherman oaks galleria so when i okay. watched that movie i'm going right back to that time sure. for me because that was the interesting thing about that film is they didn't have to populate it with very many extras because they just shot with real right. people you know who were who were there um, but, um, in just doing a little cursory re research for the show, I wanted to look up the Galleria and then, and then learned, and I did not know this at the time, but in 1982, Frank Zappa, uh, released a song called Valley Girl, um, that actually was talked a lot about mall culture and specifically mentioned the Sherman Oaks Galleria as, it being, you know, a, a hotbed well, for, for well, there was teen, the movie as well. Valley Girl. Well, yeah, the movie, the movie came out in 1983. Right. So you've got Fast yeah. Times, it comes out in 82, Valley mm -hmm. Girl, the song in 82, then Valley Girl, the movie in 83. That was shot at a different mall. I, I made a note of it. Um, it was the Del Amo fashion mall. So, you know, the, the, they started cropping up all over the place in this incarnation very quickly because they were very successful spaces, you know, and, and you know, drew a lot of a, a lot of people and then being featured in major movies, um, I'm sure helped to continue to spread the concept to other right. parts of the country because otherwise, you know, really how how would it propagate? You know, we've got social media now, so everybody knows what's going on everywhere all the time. But, you know, back then these things had to get exposure in some, in some way. And those, these movies helped a lot, but I mean, you know, when we, I, I, I tried to kind of do a search for movies that took place in malls or malls that were featured in movies. And it, it actually was like, not very, not an effective search. And I kept running through my head thinking, okay, how many times do we see movies you know, like Terminator 2 uh, was actually shot partially in the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Um, and I think a bad a, a, a Blues Brothers, you know, the whole chase sequence that, <laughs> that that destroying a mall with with the car chase, which was so great. So it, it becomes such a huge part of our culture, not just from a I think from a practical standpoint, um, you know, where 
you need you need to buy things you need a bunch of stores to go to that you can walk to and take care of it all at once that all makes a whole lot of sense but it became such a huge part of our culture that it's featured prominently in so many movies well you had you, i always think of past test times i always think of that and bill and ted which you you must see but bill and ted excellent adventure okay okay was, there's uh, that yeah was you know a lot of it took place in the mall yeah, yeah. but uh and that's and you you, you don't watch you don't watch Stranger Things though, I'm so so you have not seen that. There a lot of the I, stuff. Yeah, takes I did. Place I, I the first was it Marvel. season four? Is it season four that's out now? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I season four lost me. I I I we we tried to watch the first episode <laughs> of it, and we just said this has turned into, I don't know, it's some some sort of you know. This is a digression, but it just it turned into some like <laughs> filmmaking experiment. You know how how can we how can we turn it more into Mrs. Maisel than it is going to be a you know a, a sci fi. <laughs> we horror. still enjoyed, but a lot of it did take no, place sure. at the mall. Yeah, so yeah. It's uh, which started in season that, three. That's still brings you back. Yeah, but I'm you fine. know. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, what, what, it's, it's, this stuff takes me back. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. A hundred percent. And just seeing Walden books behind you, that was, yeah, that was the major, um, the major bookstore. It was the Sherman Oaks. Uh, it was fashion square is what it was called. The one right near my house, um, that I could walk to, but I didn't walk there because it was LA, you know, nobody walks in LA and it's so true. Nobody you walks. get in your car and then you try to you find a parking space. <laughs> um, yeah, I would go literally like three short blocks and park on the street right outside the mall and go in the entrance, you know, and then walk around. So how much sense does that make? But I was young, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was the Sherman Oaks Fashion Square. That's what it was called. And eventually they enclosed that and made it two, two stories and enclosed it mm -hmm. and turned it into a big, ugly building um <laughs> so they made it more like a you know a, a where malls were were going to but um i mean I, you know it's 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 uh as successful as the galleria was it didn't really have a good long life because it started to to suffer for some reason they weren't doing good business and they went through a whole bunch of changes and then they remodeled it and they turned it into an open air mall they went the other direction and um and you know made it um a, a mixed use space where there's office buildings and mortgage companies and mm. you know plus restaurants and uh, and higher end restaurants i mean nice not, i say higher end nice ni nicer restaurants the movie theaters were still there for a while and then i guess that the covid like you go to the movie theaters at the, at the mall i don't know oh yeah yeah yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. But I had my favorite movie theaters. I mean, that, you know, that being, you know, a whole nother show, but we can work it in here. When you're in LA, you have some of the best theaters in the, in, in the mm -hmm. world, movie theaters in the world. I mean, from, you know, from Grauman's to, um, you know, the, the Cinerama Dome, which turned to the arc light, which now I guess is not, is going away, which is just so unbelievably tragic. And, and it is, repulses me at a level i can't begin to tell you i you know you know the the, the egyptian theater on hollywood boulevard there was which of course got renovated by disney and now disney first room films are there all the time which i was so excited about because i thought you know finally a movie studio is investing in old theaters theater, because right. i mean they were beautiful i mean you know um the Chinese theater is like one of the most beautiful spaces. Can I ask how how is it seeing a movie inside there? Because that's that's one oh, that I've always wanted. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, the one of the largest screens um, of any movie theater, and uh, fantastic sound system, and just the decor on the inside. It's it's just hard to describe. I mean, all these movie houses, you know, the 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 larger ones um in in la were you know modeled after opera houses you know the, the opulence was incredible and um you know watching the slow decline i mean you know the multiplexes that came out it, it, it turned into this whole sterile thing it's like okay you're in a black box yeah you got velvet seats yeah you got a the screen sizes got smaller they were trying to 
squeeze more theaters into a smaller space so you don't get that really grand cinematic experience that you do at the other theaters so yes i would go see movies at the mall just to go see a movie it was convenient um but i tried to hold out um to go see in those theaters yeah because the other theaters not every movie played in those theaters there were certain movies that played in those theaters and so if you wanted to see a movie you, you had to go to whatever theater it was it was a, it was available in and when the movie theater in one of the theaters in Sherman Oaks this was a, a, another kind of really grand, beautiful old theater where I saw it, it was where I saw Jaws. It was where I saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind, all kinds mm -hmm. of on cause of movies. Suddenly one day it was closed and everyone thought it was just to be refurbished. And all of a sudden one day, you know, I drive down the street and they turn the freaking theater into a gap. It was became a gap <laughs> clothing store. They kept the the um, theater kind of marquee front to it, but the entire inside was now a gap store. And I thought, oh, this is this is criminal. It's, you know, this is absolutely criminal. That saddens and, me always. I, I have had yeah. the same thing. A movie theater that I used to go to, Crossroads in St. Pete. Later on, it became a church, and I, I went to so many movies there. <laughs> I've had the same facade too, and it still uh, it still bothers me that yeah. it was changed <laughs> away from a movie theater. Yeah, I mean, you know, but, I'm. But I'm, I also I'm, had. I mean, I'm. I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I. I was never very privy or researched very much the, you know, the 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 economics of it because they're you know, there are a lot of movie theaters in Los Angeles and, you know, maybe the industry, you know, couldn't support that many overall and they weren't making as much money. I, I, I don't know, but, but um, you know, just when, when I see the great ones like the Cinerama Dome, I mean, that's practically a reason to go visit Los Angeles is to see, you know, a 70 millimeter print projected inside that space. There's just, there's mm -hmm. nothing, there's nothing better than that. Um, and I've mentioned this many times, but I saw 2001, you know, when I was a kid there, which is what that theater was made for. I mean, it, 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 the movie was made for practically that theater. There were only two, I don't know, two or three um, uh, movie theaters that could support Cinescope because I mean you need a special projector right. and special lenses and a special screen and this screen was curved you know there it's a round building and the screen is curved and you sit and you know anywhere you sit in the theater is a good it's a good seat um, so it's not a high capacity theater but um, so I guess now I guess you know, it's it's just no longer enough of a thing for people to support it. But, you know, back to the mall. Yes, I did go because um, you could see a couple different movies in a day. And I did that a lot. I went to the movies a lot, you know, because it was my thing. You know, it was my mm -hmm. thing growing up. I didn't watch television, but I went to movies. And um, so to have that convenience of being able to go from one, you know, and then go right. have something that's, to eat. That's the whole aspect. Go watch another one. Charming. Yeah. Yes. And spend your whole day or spend your whole evening, you know, indulging in, and I mean, that was just, you know, you, 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 you can't replace that um, anymore. So it seems, it seems like, you know, of course, mall culture is still prevalent because, you know, like, uh, like, you know, countless people, um, my, my, we have the, our, in Orlando, which is near where I live, um, We've got the Mall at Millennia, which is a two-story, huge mm -hmm. space, enclosed, air-conditioned, which is important in Florida for everybody. But um, and we probably now it's a once-a-year uh, pilgrimage because we just oh, really? don't we don't get out that much anymore because <laughs> we're, we're, we're definitely online people. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I, I I'll admit it, we're recluses. We don't like to leave our little area. <laughs> we like to stay home. You know, there's nothing better than Amazon.com and Total Wine that delivers, you know, so all that's really important. But we'll, we will go and we'll have a lovely lunch at the Italian restaurant there and we'll walk around and try to do our, you know, shopping and spend an afternoon and then we just get annoyed and tired and we just want to go home. So, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so life has changed, but you don't see the teens there anymore because there's no movie theaters, you know, well, at, at this one. I, I don't see the teens. I mean, I see teens, but it's not like how it was. I mean, I did the same thing. I, I specifically remember seeing like several of the movies that we covered here during the show. I mean, I, I saw Blazing Saddles in the mall. I saw Bad News Bears in the mall. And, uh, and the other one that we did for forgot, I saw a Honky Tonk Freeway, which was only out a couple of weeks. I remember seeing that at the mall. So, yeah. uh, but I, I specifically remember it. And I was like you, I was never big arcade. I, I thought it was exciting to get to go into the arcade. But uh, at the age that it was, my parents were not, my parents thought it was like silly for me to be wasting money. On, on video well, that's games. how I felt. That's how I felt. Like, and I could afford it. I could. I could afford to buy one, and and I still couldn't quite get it. Get into it because I thought I'm just shoving quarters into this thing. It's frustrating me. You know, I keep starting over. But I tried really hard. Asteroids was my game. I liked Dragon <laughs> Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer was amazing. I thought that was just a that was really a fascinating um, and inventive game. Uh, but you, you played know, it for like I, 30 seconds and you got killed. That was, that was yeah, exactly. Oh, and I, I did pretty well at it. I got far, I got did deep you? into it. But then once you get killed, it's like, okay, it's repetitious. You're starting over and doing right. the same thing again, the same thing again. And I just started to drive me nuts. <laughs> and I thought, no, I, this is not, this is affecting my mood as well as my, my, uh, my wallet. I'm, I think I'm, I'm done with all this, but you know, the arcade, the thing, you know, it's like, it's, it was like going to Vegas, you know, it's like bing, right. bing, bing, bow, 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 dee, 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 stuff's <laughs> going off everywhere. Yeah, it's exciting. It's a great, it's a stimulating environment just to, just to be in. So, well, everyone, um, there was a hangout. It was a hangout, but I, yeah. I look, I never got the, it was, it was still that exciting thing when you, when you put the dollar and get all the quarters Oh, what game am I going to play? I never got the $5 bill. I always get, my parents gave me like a buck <laughs> so I could play like four games, but it was yeah, four, uh, four games. Was, and if you played Dragon's Lair, it was, it was 50 cents. That Two. was a, that right, was a exactly. high price well, game. Man. Came later, but yeah. I don't, I don't remember, but it, it was just, it was just a fun thing, but like that, look, that wasn't really the majority of my mall experience. The majority was, like I said, you know, we talked about the bookstore. I worked at I worked at a couple of different places at the mall, and neither one lasted long. I was I was work, working at one uh, one little restaurant, and I don't even remember the name of it. It was like uh, some diner type place, and I worked for like uh, I worked for like two weeks, and you know, oh, I have to stay after, I have to stay late to go clean up dishes and everything like that. And I was like, no. <laughs> oh not, yeah, I was yeah. not thrilled with that one. Well, that, I worked you know, at the that's Gap so funny, like, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, Stranger Things really does dramatize it well. I mean, not only was it a, a, a place for young people to hang out, it was a great place for young people to work. Right. Um, because you were in a safe place, you were yeah, you were learning all those things, and and by and large, all those little, those restaurants, uh, I call them restaurants, fast food booths, you know, the the um, eating spaces. Um, were pretty much manned by uh, by younger people. So, yeah, it really it really truly was a culture across the board. It wasn't just the young people that went there to hang out, but the young people that worked there, and it, you know, just a highly social environment. Um, well, that was the fun thing. On your break, you get get to run out to another store in the mall. You were like you said, everything was right there. Yeah, it, that yeah. was one of the exciting things. Yeah. Um, I I mean, it, it's just. It's a shame in a lot of ways that that's gone there, you know, that that time is gone because you, you're not getting the back. Everything is really mostly done online. And I, I do like going to the mall now, but I don't have that same excitement yeah. as when I was a kid. But uh, it's still more exciting to me than, you know, shopping online. But it's just the convenience of shopping online is is, is oh. the difference now. Oh yeah, no doubt. But I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's like the world has turned into my, my greatest science fiction fantasy, you know, that I ever imagined, which is <laughs> you can just get everything, you know, well, the world is you. like the Jetsons now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, totally. So, but that's, I mean, that's for me. I just, I, I don't even know. I'm so, you know, disconnected from it all. I have no idea where, you know, young, young people go to hang out <laughs> or do they go to hang out anywhere anymore? You, you kind of, you know, you just, you don't, you don't see it so much. Um, I, I mean, I, I know what happens. Sure they, the, there have to be places. 
but uh, I'm sure there's yeah. still more because I, I know like you know my kids aged friends that they they still go to the mall but it's not I don't think it's like the this it's by far not like it was I mean it's yeah. far from where it was at, the, at that time because that was really the place and like you know just everything was done there and yeah. you don't get you don't go to get records anymore really everything's Spotify now or you know so you don't get CDs and everyone hanging around in the music store you don't get you know the arcade everyone's hanging around the, the latest video games so all the the big social spots are for teens are not there, right? So uh, it's just the, like the food court and shopping, really. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you know, that old saying: all good things must come to an end. <laughs> it just, it just, yeah, right. it was, uh, <laughs> it was a bummer. It, it, yeah, and, and you know, watching the Galleria get turned like completely remodeled and turned into something else um was kind of like well you know here we go it was tearing down the old and putting up the new it was just faceless and cold and and um yeah you know i mean similar thing happened right next door to uh, the chinese theater grommets i don't even know what it's called anymore um lemley's chinese theater i don't i i don't know we called it grommets forever because that's what it was um you know, they, 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 they built like right next to the big gorgeous theater. They ended up building a multiplex, you know, of smaller screen movie theaters. They put in the Kodak theater, which of course now huge events are down there. Um, um, all kinds of shows are shot there. It's a massive, massive facility that you literally could get lost in trying to take the escalator you you don't know where you are half the time it's got to be four or five levels tons of restaurants and stores and and it's very busy you know because it's a huge uh, tourist area so it's very very busy but it's it's like there's a coldness about it and you know i guess us older people that you know i never thought i would say this become <laughs> that person who pines away for the you know the 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 good old days of 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 <laughs> periods of time like this but but i i, I really do you know i kind of i i miss that aspect of what life was about and you mm -hmm. know things change that's the way it works things change and you you know there's there's not much you can do about it um cuz that's the way but like you said it was the primary things that got yanked away by the internet are the very were really the cornerstones of the of the yeah. the social gathering spots so yeah i think that was in many ways key to uh their demise as you know teen hangouts so the one that you hung out one the more that you hung out with is is not really there so that i just want to anyway i i it's still there i think yeah. um but it, they turned it they went from it they they remodeled it from being an enclosed mall to an open air mall um yeah okay. you know, they tore the walls down and you know they, they turned it into just you know whatever you know a lot well at least in california because you know cal the weather in california lends itself to open air areas more so than other other parts of the country but um but i mean you know i, I look you know i've never been to mall in america mall mall was it mall of america yeah mall of a god sorry mall of america but, which has got to be some fascinating uh yeah. place to go um, i've never been there either. I'm done. i'd love to go there to see it the, the the other you know the other mall i ex you know huge mall that i experienced which was a precursor most definitely to the mall culture we're talking about but it was the um i think it's just called the galleria in um houston texas and it's monstrously huge mm -hmm. I mean, monstrously huge and a really neat place to go visit and shop um, and all of that, uh, you know, like big enough. It's got ice rink and ice rink and the movie theaters and it's double level. And it's just it's just like it's like two freaking football fields. It's just or bigger than that. I mean, it's just massive. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I, I you know, I guess they I I love the grand spaces <clears throat> i still do yeah. i enjoy them you know um, 
I, I, I like that idea. I like, I like being in them. There's something about them when they're, when they're well designed that that's just generally speaking, enjoyable, not, I mean, this is a bad comparison, but it's like being in a cathedral, you know, or a really lovely mm -hmm. religious space. That's, that's, I, I don't disagree. I think that's a good it's design. Yeah, it's yeah. designed yeah. around, you know, feeling good. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and they've, the, architects and designers have been very effective at at, at creating that obviously because it's a th it's a thing um you go to you go to a multi the equivalent of a mall in europe okay the only places in europe i've the only place in europe i've done this is in germany and that um in dusseldorf but you walk in and it's the most unbelievably claustrophobic experience you could possibly oh, yeah. imagine mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're still multi-level there's still escalators but they don't have a lot of open air space because they're so restricted in space everything is crushed in on you and you're going down hallways and with all these people and then crowds that are trying to get in out of the cold or get in out of the heat or doing you know they're on their lunch breaks and they're shopping etc it's just crushed with people and it's like a like a like a you know mice maze or something you know that you're you're going through and i every time i went into them um i just felt like oh man you know this is just i i, I don't like it it's not but culturally you know it's acceptable to them because that's what they're they, right. they live with and what they're they used, used to, to. so mm -hmm. us having all this extra space in the united states to have you know room to breathe and move and and hang out is i think a uniquely um american thing well the, the over here there's a good one the, the sawgrass mall which is which has a lot it's a very large mall you can get lost in there but uh the ones the ones that i mentioned before are like king's plaza in new york i've not been to it in over i guess 20 to 25 years <laughs> and it's uh even back then already in like late 90s it was getting really seedy i don't know how it is now maybe it's not anymore but it's like, you know, I I didn't want to go there even. <laughs> and uh, I, I have been to Tyrone Square Mall in uh, in St. Pete, but, you know, in the past. And it's just like, you know, like anything, perspective. Like, you know, I, I was so grand when I was a teen. And just, you know, now it's when I looked at it as an adult, oh, it's really not that big. It's the only, oh, yeah. it's like, you know, it's not, the mall's not that grand at all. Like you said, it's so yeah but uh so it was disappointing it was still fun just to be in it again as an adult but it was like not not the same feelings at all <laughs> yeah. as when i saw it as a, as a kid well i you know i i certainly have felt privileged in many ways for many aspects of my life but having the chance to actually be in the center of i mean just even talking about mall culture it started at a place that i grew you know i i sure. i I attended, you know, that I, I went to, that I frequented and watched it grow and didn't even realize what it was until, you know, I look back on it and think, wow, that really was a fascinating phenomenon and, and um, really enjoyable, you know, kind of a very nostalgic period of time um, in my young adult life, for sure. Well, this was, this was fun. It's like, it's always like bittersweet when we do these type of things. These shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's, it's 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 fun to reminisce, and it's sad that it's it's gone. You know, these yeah. things are gone. So. Yeah, I suddenly need a drink. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, let let us know in the comments which you know some of your favorite memories of the malls and which malls that you know all of you went to and uh experienced and uh as always thanks for watching and please subscribe thank you for listening to pop culture retro where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast